English producer, and we did that in LA too. But one time in the studio, Carmen Appis came down of uh, Rod Stewart, Stewart uh, Vanilla Fudge, Cactus, one of my favourite bands, and he came into the studio, and I had the Druins down there, and I also had the Ludwigs, and the Ludwigs were over on the corner. Carmen Appis comes down, and he, he's, it was a little bit out of it. And he went, yeah, this looks right, this looks right. And it was about 10.30 in the morning. And um, and the booms were up, but they weren't around the drum kit. And, and, and I had the drawing kit. And he comes up and he's hitting the bass drum. And he goes, don't let anyone ever change your sound, man. Don't let anyone ever change your sound. And then he went, I proceeded to walk over to my Ludwigs and start fingering off the, the, the plastic covering. And you got to get rid of this shit. you got to get rid of all this shit. <laughs> You want to sound good? I said, well, great, Carmen, but not now. Well, you know, because I was halfway through a, a drum track and he's tearing the, sh the, the plastic covering off my drums. So, uh, but that was a funny experience. Uh, Resurrection? Resurrection. Resurrection was done at um, A&M uh, in LA. That was a great record. That was probably the best sounding album that we ever made. Uh, but Jeff and I had to make that under such pressure, record company pressure and pressure, personality conflict with the producers. Uh, Danny Korchmar produced that album and he had a fantastic young guy engineering and if it wasn't for that guy, um, I don't think I would have been able to, to get as good a drum sound as I did because he, Danny Korchmar come from the era of gaff it all up. You know, he liked the Eagles sound and all the wet cardboard boxes and he was still living in the past. But I love the big open, you know, drum sounds that, that, I, that I grew up with. Um, <coughs> tell us about some of your career highlights. My career highlights? Career highlights. That's a hard question. Career highlights. <laughs> uh, on stage or backstage? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're talking about uh, the fans or the, the girls. <laughs> it's a very broad uh, topic. Career highlights. Uh, on stage would have to be um, uh, walking out on stage at. Um, when we stadium with Kiss, and just and another another time, just the big crowds, certain people in the crowd watching that you never anticipated. Uh, when, we were, when we were playing in uh, Italy at one time, and uh, I was flying around the kit, and the greatest compliment for me was not like he's a great rock drummer. It was like we, we were playing uh, Monsters of Rock, and there were 30,000, 40,000 people out there, we were put onto this bill where we were really, really shouldn't have been. Uh, and we had to really, really play hard. And I remember playing and all the roadies coming up to the side of the stage. And they were all the ex-roadies from uh, the sensational Alex Harvey band. And the Scottish guy, I hopped off behind the drum kit and I ran over and I grabbed some water and a towel. And he grabbed me and he said, hey man, you play like Buddy Rich. You play like fucking Buddy Rich. I love it. I love it. How's a young guy playing like Buddy Rich? He couldn't believe it. That was, to me, uh, an incredible compliment. And I went back on and, um, uh, yeah, it was, that was a good, that was a highlight. I remember. Um, tell us about um, the transition from Kings of the Sun to the rich and famous, your new band. How that, ah. how that evolved. The Rich and Famous came about from Jeff and I living with the stigma of a certain style and a certain band name that we couldn't escape from, which was Kings of the Sun. As much as we dearly love them, we had to just walk up and put them in a boat and just send them out onto the to the water. Then it's the memories all floating around out there. But we couldn't 
we couldn't keep playing music under the, the, that name because it just had too much, we'd been through too much um, joys and hardships and fights and uh, sensational times that we, we, knew, we knew we couldn't repeat it and music had changed so much so when the rich, I thought of the rich and for us to continue we couldn't have continued under that guise of the, of the Kings of the Sun. We had to change our name and give ourselves a fresh canvas to start on and I'm so glad we did because we really really tried uh, to put everything that we had into that rich and famous, those, those three albums that we made um, with the same hunger and same hunger and desire and passion that we had in the early days of Kings of the Sun. And that's what rich and famous means to me. And it come late in life, so it was hard for me to summon that energy engine. Um, I agree. It was hard to, to summon that energy. And uh, when we knew we weren't going to really make any money or we have done so many shows, uh, but they're magical and it's a miracle that they exist. And I recommend everyone who loved the Kings of the Sun to go and get those rich and famous albums because you won't be disappointed. Because I certainly uh, am not. Yeah. I'm just going to cut there. Yeah. I want to get.